Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here back on this, uh, th is it Thursday? It is Thursday. One more day till Friday, September 7th, 2023, just about noon, straight up noon here along the West Coast in California. And latest activity looks like a 4.5 coming in to the uh, very extreme end here of the Aleutian Trench, right at this little point area. That's the uh, little bend in the boundary. Uh, although it looks like that came in a couple hours ago, 4.5. So let's see what's going on here. Maybe a 1.7 in California, one of the latest quakes there on the globe. All right, uh, let's look at the big picture, see what we got going on. Anything major going on here? Well, we do have some aftershock activity following that uh, 6.2 in the Chile area from yesterday. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of low-grade fours coming in to the Peru-Chile Trench, indicating uh, a little bit of strain out here across the area. We'll continue to watch this region. As we uh, know, this area is capable of producing some mega quakes. A little bit further up north into the uh, Columbia area, 4.3 just after midnight. About 142 kilometers deep here into the, uh, looks like the Colombian Trench. Uh, Puerto Rico area looks like it's calming down slightly uh, from the past couple days. We have been seeing a little bit of swarming up here now. It's starting to fade away, but that, uh, uh, of course, is an area to watch far as uh, mega movement goes across that subduction zone. But uh, for now, a couple smaller quakes there today. New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, most of these looks like these two pointers from last night. Haven't really seen anything newer popping up here across this area of the country. Over here in Idaho. Uh, just off of this fault system, I can't remember which one, it's a Lost River Fault, Sawtooth is over here. Looks like a handful of smaller quakes kicking up there yesterday and continuing into the day today with some twos and some ones. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, I don't think we got anything major going on, but uh, let's go over here and check real quick. See if there's anything we're missing. Um, let's see, it looks like a handful of smaller spikes here, that's going to be the earthquake activity. Uh, but nothing, these are probably below the 1.0 threshold, so not a whole lot going on there. Across the Yellowstone area, uh, across the Pacific Northwest, Mount St. Helens, and uh, a little bit of activity here around Mount Adams as well. Uh, looks like a couple smaller earthquakes from today and yesterday there around Mount St. Helens area. Um, far as I know... Uh, the earthquake activity is just kind of continuing there across the area as far as that small microquake activity goes. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in real quick and see what we got up here at Mount St. Helens. And then we'll move on. I'm just going to check their localized graph here and see what we got. Still looks about the same. I'm not seeing any broad scale thick signatures out here on this graph. These are, you know, still very small microquakes, but there's still quite a bit of it popping up here across the area of Mount St. Helens. Of course, we'll continue to watch that and report on any newer movement. Uh, Northern California up here, a handful of smaller quakes, uh, mostly from yesterday, although we did get one 3.2 earthquake here, pretty shallow, uh, just off the San Andreas Fault here, the northern edge, northern end. Uh, this earthquake negative 0.5 goodness so some shallow earthquake activity taking place here uh, within the last couple hours uh, rest of the movement some movement outside of santa rosa area uh, now this movement up here across the Cobb mountain area that's your calpine hydrothermal operations there and uh, over here around this area of windsor uh, 2.0 and a 1.3 coming in couple different fault systems there in the coast range. Uh, Bay Area fairly quiet for now. Southern California uh, looks about the same as yesterday. We're not really seeing any major swarm. No major uptick here. Got one earthquake around the Ventura area, 1.8. Uh, but aside from that, things look very typical out there across the west coast for now. Uh, up into the Alaska area, minimal movement at best. There's that one earthquake out here along the Aleutian Trench, the extreme edge. About 10 kilometers deep for that 4.5. Now, let's see. Was there sh something showing up here across the Japan area? Doesn't look like it. There's that deeper movement quake there from yesterday. Still waiting for some adjustment to take place here across the Mariana Trench, Japan Trench. This whole western edge here uh, has gone awfully quiet. Goodness. In fact, it looks like a globally quiet day for the most part out here. 
not a whole lot going on throughout the uh, Indonesia area or the uh, Tonga region. The last earthquake, though, was pretty deep over here, 421 kilometers deep. Um, in the Indonesia Islands region, New Zealand, not a whole lot popping up here for now. Um, as far as moderate activity goes, I'm sure they got some microquakes. Uh, and not a whole lot being reported there across the Mediterranean. Now this is going to be the earthquake 3D globe that shows the Mediterranean data uh, across the area. Looks like uh, looks like about the same as yesterday. Some older movement quake activity out here. Nothing going on in the Atlantic. Um, way down here in the Pacific, though, this is a divergent boundary out here. A couple earthquakes coming in uh, from yesterday. Goodness, there's a lot of older quake activity out here. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's going to be good here. I think we'll probably see something pop off here pretty soon with larger scale movement. Uh, very in the near in the near future. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on. See what else we got here for space weather because there's really not a whole lot out there. Uh, space weather a little bit on the quiet side as well. Just a little bit of sea flare activity. Peeking out. Well, kind of looks like we're kicking up here a little bit. Some type of flaring going on. <clears throat> See where that's coming from. Um, hard to tell at this moment because the data is a little bit behind here on this latest imagery. About 10 minutes behind that and that uh, flare activity is just current, currently coming in. Uh, so I'm guessing it's probably going to be from one of these sunspots that are currently facing Earth. Maybe this one over here. Looks like a little bright feature popping up here. And that's going to be from a bunch of sunspots that are currently making their way across the visible disk of the sun. 34, 25, 34, 24, and 34, 23. Uh, the latest magne magnetogram image here sh does show a little bit of complexity here with these sunspots. Uh, so we continue to watch these as they revolve, evolve, and uh, currently face, you know, get into position to face the Earth. Also over here, the sunspot regions looking... A little tore up, disorganized, but uh, still harbors a little potential for some flaring with the uh, dynamic setup here within and around the core area. Uh, looks like overall threat right now. Let's go see what we got here. 95% chance for a sea flare. There's that flaring activity currently affecting the D-layer absorption map. 25% uh, chance for a flare. X flare around 5% chance. And uh, like I say, we'll keep an eye on this and see. Well, actually, we're peeking into the M flare right now. Uh, so I'm not 100% certain where this is coming from. We'll check back on that here in a second and see if they've updated this, uh, this image here. It's still about 10 minutes behind. Let me click on this and see. All right, let's check out the... Storm Prediction Center weather outlook here for today. Doesn't look like a whole lot. Um, some general thunderstorm activity out here across a portion of the country. Slight risk up into the northeast. Uh, doesn't look like any tornado threat. Wind appears to be the main threat out here in the yellow uh, for some uh, potential large hail out there across areas of the D.C. region, Virginia, New York, uh, Pennsylvania area as well. All right, uh, let's check out the hurricane activity out in the Atlantic. We got uh, we got Hurricane Lee ramping up out there, 105 mile per hour sustained winds, and this is a definitely a, a pretty big one. Big storm is expected to reach a Category Five here um, pretty soon, as it's in the warmer waters, heading off to the west northwest at about 15 miles per hour. Yeah, something to watch here. Let me see. Where's our spaghetti models? I guess we got to go over here to uh, Tropical Tidbits here and check out the storms. Hurricane Lee is expected to uh, track west northwestward for a little bit. Um, there is still a little uncertainty on how far west this hurricane will get to the uh, over here around Florida and the east coast. But uh, most models, as you can see, on these spaghetti models here, they all kind of show a, uh, um, you know, a northward turn. The intensity of Hurricane Lee, a lot of models forecasting that Category 5. These are knots over here, so wind speed's going to be um, a little bit greater there. 
but that's uh, pretty impressive to see, that's for sure, as uh, Hurricane Lee continues to spin out there into the, um, in the Atlantic area. Is this going to work? There it is. Got a uh, well-defined eye on that. Um, it is quite impressive. That would be a very dangerous hurricane uh, if that were to hit out uh, along the east coast. But for now, it's uh, really not doing too much damage out there. Aside from stirring up some massive waves, I'm, I'm almost certain of that. Let's check out the forecast models and see what uh, these weather models are looking at. We're going to go out here to the uh, North Atlantic. This is the states over here. We've got Hurricane Lee uh, bombing out in the uh, Atlantic. Gonna kick this thing into motion. We're gonna watch that and see where it wants to track. Remember, high pressure up here, going uh, clockwise in the northern hemisphere, and then that could obviously got low pressure over here spinning counterclockwise. That's gonna squeeze this up and probably in the northern direction as the uh, spaghetti models are forecasting. It doesn't really get too close to the eastern portion of the country, and that's good news. Something to watch though, because. Uh, all it takes is a little bit of uh, steering of this hurricane off course, off the project, uh, projected path, and it could be influenced amongst other pressures out here that could direct it uh, further west, but we'll continue to watch that. The latest model right now does show that Hurricane Lee uh, obviously becomes a strong hurricane, major hurricane, uh, and then gets drifted up to towards the north, and then, well, you see the rest of it gets sent back, <laughs> sent back to the east where it uh, looks like it's going to drop a bunch of rainfall over here. Uh, far as, uh, let's see what else we got down the road. Very active though. Notice that there's quite a few tropical uh, systems out here in the Atlantic. Just spinning out there. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, advanced model here for um, long-term models. High pressure, low pressure out here. Kind of want to see what's going on here for the West Coast. It's supposed to be hot. It's supposed to be dipping up or dipping. <laughs> it's supposed to be going up in the mid 90s, upper 90s here uh, this coming week, weekend, and in the next week. I'm really not seeing any major pattern change. A little bit cooler out here for the folks in the East, but Pacific Northwest looks like Canada up there is going to be cooking as well. Uh, I just don't see anything that's going to uh, provide any relief as far as long term cooling trends go out here along the west coast so we'll just have to take the the mid 90s for now all right getting back here to the space weather um uh, yeah that flare is kicking up there still climbing look at that up around the uh what are we m 2.0 right now for the current flare level we are getting the effects of that in the ionosphere and that is centered uh well just off the coast of mexico here in the eastern pacific uh, that does play a part on the um, effects on navigation systems in this area. So that uh, center there will be affecting higher frequency and the low frequency navigation systems. Looks like that's coming off of um, that sunspot here that I had mentioned. The suspect there on the northeastern segment of the sun. Right there, beautiful feature. Absolutely uh, nice and bright still kind of rising so i don't know if we're done with that or not that's coming from uh it looks like that's coming from let's see this is the latest one let's bring this over here real quick and double check this isn't going to be 3423 this is actually going to be from this area 3424 but this is an older image from last night so these are more positioned uh, a little bit further uh, towards the center of the sun there's 3423 this big sunspot 3424 is going to be right here but if you look on the latest image all this is kind of shifted a little bit uh, further to the western side or center disc center of the sun so watch this area definitely got some uh, flaring kicking off right now uh, somewhat dynamic activity and uh, it's, that's a little bright feature definitely coming in uh, pretty nicely there it looks like we may be rounding off as we speak 
Yeah, I see a little bit of the curvature right here. So we're peeking out. Looks like at a M2.1 solar flare. All right, folks, stay safe out there. Have a good day, and we will chat you guys a little bit later uh, this evening. Take care, everyone. Stay safe out there.